the latest on the massive cybersecurity breach of personal data affecting up to 4 million current and former federal employees, officials within the U.S. government are accusing agents of China for the hacking. And the White House has said it's considering financial sanctions against China in response. What's the latest and where will all this lead? I'm joined by Gordon Chang, a writer for Forbes.com who covers China and Asia. He's also a contributor at The Daily Beast and he's the author of the book, The Coming Collapse of China. He joins us from New York. Well, what do you make of this? The U.S. officials are saying China's behind this cybersecurity breach. Gordon, what, what's the story from your vantage point? Well, it probably is China, Larry. For instance, the data from the OPM, the Office of Personnel Management breach, also the breaches of health insurers in the past, these have not made their ways onto the black market, which means that probably criminals are not involved. Also, when you look around the world, there are only a hand few, handful of countries, and probably maybe just China, that is able to crunch all this data. So that's why I think people are pointing to China. As well, I'm sure the administration has done the forensics on this, and that leads back to China as well. So clearly we've got a problem. And the one thing that's good about this is that at least they're talking about China in public. You go back a decade when federal investigators had uh, all the goods on Chinese cyber hacking, they didn't mention Beijing. So this is a change in the way that we deal with Beijing. China says it's uh, irresponsible and unscientific to make the allegation. Yeah, and they didn't deny it either. Um, you know, clearly there have been so many hacking attempts. Um, you know, China is not only going after the federal government. And a lot of people say, well, yeah, that's fair game. But China also goes after U.S. corporates to take information to help Chinese state enterprises. And they also go after advocacy groups, charities, foundations, NGOs, uh, newspapers, New York Times, Wall Street Journal. This is something the U.S. doesn't do. And apparently the Chinese just want to have essentially all the information they can about the United States. And that is lead, that's got to lead us to the question is, why does China want this much information? Yeah, why? What is it going to do with it? Why? Well, I think that I think that they probably realize that uh, in you know our our world today that uh, cyber attack is going to be the first element of any war, and so they want to have that information. Also, I think that they find it very useful because if they know more about federal employees, both current and former, they can make actually turn some of them to work for China, and also they can appear as a trusted party over the internet, which means that they can get information in their spear phishing attacks. There's a lot of reasons why they want this information. One congressional aide saying it's even possible that they've uh, hacked into cabinet secretaries. You buy that? Yeah, of course, because they've hacked into the White House, into the Office of Secretary of Defense. There probably isn't a sensitive American network that has not been breached by the Chinese, because they've been doing this for more than two decades. They're very, very good at it, and they want this information. All right. What does it mean to, if we impose sanctions, what, what effect would this have on the average person in China? Well, we don't know what those sanctions will be. Um, it depends how severe they are. You know, at, we're past the point where, you know, if we impose sanctions, they're going to be cost-free for us. So we're going to bear some of the costs as well. But we really have no choice because at this point, China has not stopped. We've tried to talk to the Chinese, as Secretary Kerry did in October when he had his Chinese counterpart to his home in Boston. Chinese absolutely refused to have a cyber discussion. And also those indictments of five Chinese military officers in May of 2014, that was a warning sent to the Chinese. They completely ignored it. So this is going to get serious, and both their country and our country are going to suffer. Now, we, we were suspicious of North Korea on the Sony break-in, right? China wasn't right. involved in that, right? We don't know that, Larry. And the reason is that more than half of North Korea's hackers are actually based in China. This data that was exfiltrated from Sony Pictures actually went to China, uh, which means that the Chinese knew about it because they have what's called the Great Firewall, which is the most sophisticated set of Internet controls. They know about what happens. And if you uh, take terabytes of data and you pass the Great Firewall, the Chinese know what's going on. So clearly they were complicit. They knew what was going on. And because of their long involvement with North Korea's hackers, we've got to assume that they were involved in some way. 
Some national security experts have recently say, forget ISIS, China is the next real threat to America. You buy that? I think so, in the sense that ISIS can kill America's, Americans, but they can't kill America. You know, China is a state. It has the means um, to destroy the U.S. with its weapons of mass destruction. It is actually planning this. It talks about it all the time in state media. In October 2013, Chinese state media across all of its platforms talked about how submarines could launch ballistic missiles and kill tens of millions of Americans. So this is a threat that we have to take seriously. And we haven't done that for a long time because we've tried to integrate China into the international system. But the Chinese don't want that. And so we've got to face the fact that we face a hostile power. Hostile enough, you think, for military action? Of course, they don't want to do that. They want to get their gains without fighting, as every country would. But China is risking situations where there is a possibility of escalation, such as in the South China Sea and even in the East China Sea. So clearly, China is on a path which is belligerent. And it's not just against the United States. It's also against Japan, India, Philippines, South Korea, Vietnam, Indonesia. So this is China taking on the world. What do they want? What's it? They want to dominate the world? Well, I think, first of all, they want to control their borders. They want to push their boundaries outward, and they want territory under the control of others. And that is that arc um, oh. across their southern and eastern borders. Thank you, Gordon. Thanks. Gordon Chang, thanks so much. Thank you. Gordon Chang, a writer at Forbes.com and author of The Coming Collapse of China.